Oh, hello there. Uh, okay, the computer says that we are live. Okay, so yay. <laughs> However, as always, when we begin, I'm going to ask some of you that are watching and welcome everybody that is watching. Uh, if you can tell me if you can hear me and then we can start with a chit chat with a showing of stuff and then we're gonna go into the artwork so uh, Let me know. Oh, hello, Johan He's like yeah, we hear you. Okay, then 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 this is perfect. This is perfect and uh, Let's get started. So Welcome everybody. <laughs> this is midweek, right? And the big midweek update kind of kind of thing. Uh, and I wanted to show you because I was waiting for more products to arrive. So I ordered products. Um, I wanted to start my own shop, but I didn't know which manufacturer to go with. Um, and I wanted to see um, what is possible by different manufacturers, right? Um, that does mean that, <laughs> you know, I can... Uh, I had to invest a little bit just to order from different manufacturers and see. By the way, if you hear the sound, it's beautiful outside and I have all my windows open, okay? So I'm sorry that you hear all sorts of cars going through. Usually I have the windows closed and then you cannot hear anything. But now you might hear uh, random people going with their motorcycle because it's really beautiful outside. So uh, I do not... <laughs> Uh, I do not uh, say anything, just that, uh, yeah, it's really beautiful outside. Okay, I'm going to uh, have a look uh, on the chat because I want to see, I want to see the chat as well. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, so, what did I do? Uh, I ordered from um, Printful, so stickers and different things, and I ordered from Sticker Mule and Sticker Mule I ordered because I know that they are like super into stickers so they can do any type of stickers and a little bit more than just stickers, right? And we'll get into that. Um, so I really wanted to test Sticker Mule. I wanted to test what's the quality. I wanted to compare it with the quality from Printful. Then I also ordered some things from Redbubble and uh, we're gonna order some more and it's going to arrive from Gelato and from Fine Art America and then I'll make a decision and the decisions stem on what's the best quality, what's the starting costs that I'm going to have uh, for the business, right? Because I can't necessarily um, order everything <laughs> and so on. But let's get into the designs that I did. So um, for Sticker Mural, actually in one night I did, I did some designs. I, what I wanted to do and let me explain. And these are the actually the original designs. You might not see them because I did it like somewhere around 12 o'clock in one night. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Uh, apparently, a uh, sticker mule can have not only stickers, different types of stickers and sticker sheets and so on. But they also have uh, etiquettes. Etiquettes are, um, or labels. Okay, labels for bottles and stuff that are like stickers. And I wanted to make a label and this is what I came up with. So I made a, um, a circular design <laughs> and this is done like during the night. I was thinking like, what do I do? Uh, circular design and I named it moon dust petals. Like I couldn't come up with a better, <laughs> like something like chamomile tea or something. I was like, no, moon dust petals. This is going to be my design. Notice that this design is quite big and uh, that's because I wanted to keep the details and I could, I could do... Um, gradients in it right so and this was a circular design I did a uh, circle with the micron pen also just to guide the cut right and this was the easiest thing and the second one um, there was uh, what they call coasters so things that you put your beverage on okay and uh, we did the design and I wanted to see how well they can cut on the line. So then I extended the coloring on the outside. So I did some nice combinations, some nice flowers, again in a circular design because the coasters are usually cir circular. So yeah, makes no sense to not have a circular design. So these were the original designs. I cut them, uh, I, I, I didn't cut them, <laughs> my husband cut them. Okay, let, let's be clear. He's the guy that knows how to do that. Illustrator person. Uh, and Photoshop, <laughs> he's, he's the expert. Let's put this, we have the experts doing it, right? And then I decided on some of my uh, older design, the tulip and the heart, right? Um, and so on. 
and I ordered a few so let's get into it you can order a pack of 10 of each just to see how it is so I want you to try stickers I want you to try Kiska stickers I want you to try transparent stickers because those are really interesting to have uh, and the labels so this is how the labels look like so again let's look at the original like this the original this is the label so it's pretty scaled back it's nice you can design your own label you can you can make it fun funky shapes as well it doesn't have to be circular right but I like labels to be circular okay that's me um, what I noticed it really stayed true to the colors like so it printed everything stayed true to the colors uh, it looked really nice uh, the lines are good the writing is good so uh, it's pretty nice it came uh, a bit more uh, stranger so now I'm going to move my <laughs> my stuff it came in a sheet like this so if I were to order from sticker mule and then me sending in myself I will have to cut them off so they come in a uh, sheet like this and they come in 10 packs of 10 well, we ordered 10, but they can you can order 100 or how many you want, right? So these are the labels. Pretty neat. I mean, I'm super happy with it. <laughs> I'm super happy with how they turned out. Um, let me see if I can if I can make, make them small again, <laughs> right? Um, my next thing is I'm actually going to put it on a bottle and see how long it lasts <laughs> and if it lasts uh, washing or any other stuff. Uh, we'll see. But so far, really, really enjoyed this part. Yeah. So this is the first one. Now, for the other design, which is the coaster, you guys remember it was this design I showed you. And then this is how the coaster turned out. I believe that the Costa turned out wonderful, <laughs> right? I, f I suspect that the colors changed a little bit. They become more vivid, right? So when you print them, they will become more vivid. And this is something that I wanted to try. You see here is more bluish, here is more greenish. But that's because the coasters have a coating on top. Just to make sure that uh, you do not... <laughs> Um, by mistake, uh, you know, because you're going to put something with water or something hot on it. So it needs to have a, a coating. But it is really wonderful. And they managed to cut exactly on the bla black line, which is amazing. I, I didn't think, I thought that is going to be a little bit wonky. Uh, but no, they did. And uh, this one also came in a pack of 10. So I have 10 of these. The design is awesome, considering it's a design I did in the dead of night <laughs> and nothing uh, to be done, right? So these are the coasters. Small update. <laughs> okay. Now, um, what else did I do? Uh, you guys remember uh, the heart. I, I did on Valentine's Day, I did a heart design uh, with some peonies, some roses, and, you know, with the nice leaves around. And I colored that one in. So I wanted to see uh, how it looks like a transparent sticker. And when it comes, it comes like this. It, it really cuts around it. Really nice. And you might think, oh, it's not transparent, right? Because it's white. Uh, actually, it is transparent. So let me try to show you. It's just the backing paper is white. So that might mislead you. This is how it looks like. I hope you can see. Um... Let me put something differently underneath so that you can see that it's really transparent. You can see the colors underneath it, right? Uh, really beautiful. I'm really impressed with the transparent stickers, okay? <laughs> really, really impressed. Um, okay, so I wasn't expecting this quality and I wasn't expecting this awesomeness, <laughs> to be honest. And I'm not just saying because it's my design and I love my design. I'm just saying it in general. I wasn't expecting this awesomeness. So, yeah, that's cool. So that's one. Okay. Then, uh, what else did I do? This one. This one, you might think it's another sticker. So this was the tulip design. I did a tulip design on one of... Um, I'm not sure if I did this uh, live. I think I might have done this... Hmm. <sighs> 
I might have done this only on Instagram. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's a tulip design, so I had lots, bunch of tulips, really nice. But it's actually a magnet. So this one, um, I I put it here on my board. Also, I put one of them. It's actually a magnet, so you can put it on anything that is magnetized, like on top of your fridge or on top of your um, cooking exhaust thingy, um, like the airflow. It stayed true to the colors and it looks wonderful and I wasn't expecting it to, to look like that. It's really nice, it's malleable uh, and it's a magnet. So I am impressed, color me impressed, okay? <laughs> wasn't expecting this. Uh, it's really nice, uh, looks wonderful. So uh, also came in a stack of 10. So everything that came, came in a stack of 10. Um, I think these are the minimum, the minimum number that you can order right um stack of 10 uh, you can't order on one um that is the that is the problem with secret mural ideally you would order somewhere above 200 of each if you actually want to make it like cost effective <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh yeah but i'm loving it so by the way my moms and everybody um you're gonna get some of this in your mailbox because well i can't do anything with 10 of them but uh, you know, I'm uh, since I already printed them, you know, I'm going to give them around. Um, so, sticker. And then the last one was the Kiska sticker that I wanted to order. Uh, and this is what uh, came. Tam, tam, tam. <laughs> These are the Kiska stickers. So I chose one of the potions uh, and I wanted to choose the same potion as um, I did with the other pr uh, printer services. So every, uh, every sticker that I'm printing, whether it's uh, printful gelato or anything I'm going to print the same design because I want to um, see what the difference is for the same design what difference in color has what difference in in anything so I ordered it uh, this is one of the potions I hope you can still see it and it's not really uh, to this uh, this is not transparent uh, this is actual like with white background, but you can also do it transparent. I'm not sure. I think I'm liking a lot of the transparent parts. So, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> uh, we'll see. Um, and I want it for comparison because this is the, the same, the same size that comes, for example, from Printful. I want to compare and you'll see the difference immediately. Okay. You'll see the difference. Uh, where is the tiny one? Here is the tiny one. So this is the tiny one that comes from Printful. This is Sticker Mule. You can see that this one is cut uh, totally around. Yeah. And this one comes uh, on a square piece of paper. And of course you can, in the end, the result will be the same because, you know, you're going to peel it off like this and it's going to look exactly the same as this other one. Um, but yeah, these, these are the difference. There's a slight difference in coloring. I think this one from, um, uh, Sticker Mule is lighter in color than this one, right? This one came up a little bit darker. Okay. We hear it. Oh, it's a die cut sticker. Yes. This is a die cut sticker. This is not a die cut sticker. So, uh, there's two differences like, and the same size. Of course, I ordered, and you can order also from Secret Mirror, different sizes. So I ordered bigger sizes from the Printful just to see how it looks like, um, and so on. Um, all in all, what I actually mostly like from Sticker Mirror is the transparent sticker. But uh, I also like these ones. So uh, it might be that the decision I have to make. So the problem is if I even if I open my Etsy shop, uh, because I have so many different manufacturers for so many different things, uh, I think it might be a better idea to just open, open uh, just my sticker shop separately and then the stickers to have them uh, be sent by myself. Um, and um, so everything that I would buy from sticker mules, I will, I will send by myself and then all the other ones to be drop ship, like um, t-shirts, tote bags and mugs and prints and so on. So uh, that could be. Uh, but this is a decision I have to make. So I'm going to put them here. It's going to be looking nice. 
Uh, for completeness sake, sticker mule does have a lot more different things that you could have. Like for example, they gave me some samples. So um, this is a sample of the tape. So you can have tape that you would tape your packages with, with your own design. Um, which is quite cool, right? They send me also uh, different packs of stickers. Um, just so I can see what type of sizes they have. So they even have this type of sizes. Just, eh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, and a bunch of other uh, stickers that um, I have myself. Um, this is a funny one, the cat. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, these are more in the same line as... Um, this one, these circular ones, you can do as when you, whenever you want to seal your package, like you send some a package to somebody, and this is like the thing that you seal it with. Yeah, it's nice. So, um, pretty cool. Uh, it came pretty fast. I put the transparent paper already on your laptop. On my laptop already. <laughs> okay, you're taking uh, really advantage of my own laptop, so, so to say. So, uh, yeah. This is kind of kind of the update that I have um, on the stickers. Uh, we are still waiting for the gelato to see how things look like, um, and for the prints from Fine Art America because I wanna, I really wanna try from every company uh, what is the best quality of prints before I decide who's gonna do my prints, who, where am I gonna print them, and who's gonna do my prints, and I really need to see around. Um, because the prints are something that are dear to me and so on. I probably need to let go of the perfectionism and, and I know and not every print is going to be as good as the original, but you know, <sighs> anyway, anyway. Uh, so now you might wonder what's with this design. This actually is a Protea flower and I have, I have more designs of this. Um, and I made this design, uh, based on a flower that I received for my birthday, so I was doing some flowers. Is that not exactly accurate? Because here it should have been more upper, but it doesn't matter. It looks approximately the same. Uh, and I wanted to color in. I am making this design specifically uh, for a sticker because I want to make some sticker sheets and some, some stuff. So um, this is what we're going to work on today. Uh, I hope everybody's still with me. Yeah? Hi. Let me get some water because I talked so fast and so, <laughs> so much. So, which you can see that I'm already using the coaster <laughs> to put my bottle of water <laughs> on, <laughs> on the stuff. Um, now there's, there's different ways. Um, I saw different colors of the, the, the one that I had, uh, was a really nice red. So none of the reds that I have here, this is really too, too red towards yellow orangey it was more like uh, blood red or how do you call that type of red like wine red like a really dark red um, and towards the tips it it break out and it had um, it went more into a pinkish so the inner petals are like that then here are uh, different petals um, different greens and then on the outside is all green so it has layers and layers of green and then the petals with red and pink inside and in the middle is quite gray and then pretty white on the top which is which is interesting how how things look like um so this is what i'm going to work on um and let's see but i don't have that red or I don't think I have that red that I had in my mind. I have no idea what I can get to the red in my mind in this one. So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to try to mix some reds. So I'm going to put the painting aside for now. Because I'm going to do something that's very made. This was the Protea pink eyes. Yes, the pink eyes. Although, uh, I'm going to do more red. <laughs> Slightly less pink, more red. Okay, so I have my... Uh, I have my um, my colors. I have them in this color palette, and these are my colors. So let's see what I have. I have all my reds. I have here, um, and this comes close, but I'm not sure. I have to mix it. So it's this one or this one, right? 
permanent carmine it is that red but it needs to not dry out so light okay <laughs> because i like i don't know these ones no they're way too much into the orangey one the cadmium red light and rose dorhe this one is more into the magenta and perlin violet and permanent magenta so it could be that i need to mix the two so me maybe perlin violet with red deep or queen rose with perlin violet or these two otherwise i need to see what happens if i mix the reds with something like uh paints gray uh or even with blue so i'm just gonna try out colors i do not know they have multiple colors uh sizes and shapes yes they do they have multiple color sizes and shapes i think the ones that they sell the most are the the pinkish uh variety and so on um but they're really interesting they're really interesting how how they look Okay, so let's get started. I uh, hope you can still see. So what do I have? I have my brushes and I have a piece of paper. And this is a piece of artist paper. I'm going to try to utilize, <laughs> I don't know. I probably utilize everything, doesn't matter. It's just a piece of paper. Uh, was left over from a different project that I did uh, because I have these big, uh, big sheets of paper. Uh, I have my water here next to me. I'm going to bring in more in. Um, and we're going to get started. Yay. Okay, so I have number four. Uh, I'm going to just try to do it number four. At first, um, let me know if you can see this. I don't need yet the greens. The greens will be at the end. I just want to see what the actual colors look like if I just do them uh, raw without any uh, mixing. Okay. So I'm going to go in. So these days it was really beautiful outside. I have to admit. I went outside. We went for a picnic yesterday. I made some pictures. Maybe I'll show you. Maybe we'll. Okay, this is like actually a really nice red. But I think it needs some magenta in it. Okay, this is what's called rose di uh, red deep. And red dip is uh, Windsor and Newton I have. Okay. And then we're gonna go in. I'm gonna see how it looks like. Okay. It's interesting. And then I have Kunakadom Rose. Kunakadom Rose. This is, ooh, this is really pinkish, pinkish. Okay, Kunakradam Rose, yeah, you can see it on the paper, it's really pinkish. Although, <laughs> on the watercolor pen it looks like it's really not pink. <laughs> oh, it's really pinkish, so that's that one. And then what we were saying, Permanent Carmine. Let's try this one. Permanent Carmine, it's from Schminke. Um... And then let's see what colors we get. Hmm. It's interesting. It's also pinkish. I was not expecting that one. But um, this one is more pinkish. Let's see how pinkish it is. Okay, it's a combination between the pink and the purple. So this one definitely uh, more deep. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? We have the permanent magenta, which is here. And this should be much deeper than uh, Kunaka Drum Rose. Oh, I don't know, or much. Oh yeah, this is this is much onto the purple. Right? Tam, tam, tam. Definitely was not this purple. <laughs> what I'm looking for. And then we're gonna do the permanent... Permanent Violet from Daniel's Pit. Yeah, this is much darker. This is actually one of my, my favorite violets. Right? Really dark, really nice. I think this is what I need to mix with the first one. See how it goes. Okay. Um, and 
then we have the Bain's Grey Blue. I'm just gonna do it here, right? We'll, we'll see how that goes. And then we just have Bain's Grey. Okay, Bain's Grey and Bain's Grey Blue. Uh, these are two colors I would like to see. Okay, uh, you can you can see the type of colors. They're not yet fully dry, but it starts to dry here in the beginning. This is what I'm interesting in, interested in. But I want a combination between these two. So the first one and this one. But maybe we can try to combine, to make multiple combinations, okay? Uh, and then we'll see. We'll see, we'll see where it comes. Maybe add a little yellow. <sighs> Who knows? Who knows what happens? Uh, where was I? Yeah, we went for a picnic yesterday, which was nice. As in, we stayed on a bed and we ate some home-cooked meal <laughs> that we put in a Tupperware. <laughs> so, so funny. Like, that's our picnic. <laughs> Tupperware. And uh, we just watched the lake. We just watched uh, everything that was going on. Uh, it was really nice. So, uh, so what, uh, what did I say? I said Red Deep. Right? Uh, this is the Red Deep. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm just going to take a little bit of a smidget of this permanent violet. Just a smidget. To make this one darker. So, And then I'm going to add a small bit. And then we'll see. It already makes it much darker. Look at it. So nice. Just adding a little bit of that permanent violet adding some more adding even more see till where I can okay <laughs> till where I can I can bring it Okay. What if we do equal parts? Equal parts, uh, rose dip, I think this is pretty dark, right? We'll have to see how it dries out. If it dries out the way I think, it's a pretty good approximation of what I was thinking, right? So then I, I just added a little bit of violet, okay? I'm going to try to do the same with these ones because hmm, I have a feeling that maybe we get even more interesting results. Okay, well, uh, we'll do it here. So I have a bit of Canacridum Rose. What if we do Kunakradom Rose and the Violet? Whoa! What is this? Okay, I started talking in touch. <laughs> it's so weird! Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, not what I was expecting. <laughs> okay. I think I need to go more onto the Kunakradom Violet. Let's see. Now I brought it back to, to this one. Okay. Not what I was expecting. I like more this. But then, okay. Um, then these ones, I believe, maybe permanent carmine. That's going to be... This is very transparent color, though. So let's see how that works. Permanent carmine. I'm just, I'm just playing around with colors. I don't know which colors I'm going to do. And then, I brought it too much. I, I think I did too much. So, oh, but this is an interesting color. Okay. And I'm going to add more permanent carmine. Hmm. interesting slightly be more see if it 
does anything. I don't know if on screen you can kind of see the differences between the two. This one is still the, the reddest of them all, right? But this one starts to get a nice shade as well. So the permanent carmine with the violet. Now, what I want to know is... And I'm going to have to clean up my palette. I don't like having stuff uh, randomly randomly in there because I need I need work I need workspace before I make a decision I wanna I wanna add the the gray into the mix I wanna see what happens if I just add gray that would be interesting I firstly I I first scrub with my brush and then I'll, I'm going to come with a with a wet tissue and clean the palette but I'm picking up the puddles of water with the brush because otherwise I have to use way too many tissues and way too many things so it's okay if I'm scrubbing the the color like this then it will be easier okay my cats are crazy about the um, outside world they've been at the windows the whole day uh, because usually we keep the windows closed because it's too cold outside, but today was so nice. Uh, so, yeah, they like to smell the outside, they smell the flowers and so on. They never want to go outside, they always get scared whenever we open the door. They just run outside because they think we're going to kick them out or something, I don't know. But they are content with sitting at the window and we don't never open the window fully. So that's it okay uh last test i want to do the two ones with gray i want to see what happens if i do that so i'm gonna take uh, the deep the deep <laughs> rose deep and i'm going to uh, add some gray Oh, this is going to make it super dark. It's going to be interesting. So. Okay, what do you guys think? This one or this one? Okay. Let's try to brighten it up again by adding just a smidge more rose dip. Okay, this is interesting colors. Uh, what if we add a little bit of the blue? Does it go more, more into magenta or not? Yes, it does. If you add blue to it. Okay, no, this too. It's not very different. This is not very different from this one. This is pretty dark, but it's pretty much like Berlin vi Violet, right? So I think still I am inclined to do the first one. Uh, but let's look at the Schminke one, the permanent carmine. How does that look if I add gray? And it's going to be interesting. I saw some trailers lately for new things that uh, will happen on Netflix. So, got me interesting. It was Shadow and Bone. It's so funny that this is how I figure out what books to read. <laughs> because I'm like, oh, it's made after a certain book. And I'm like, what book? I, I never read the book. So, okay. Uh, this is the one, Permanent Carmine. Uh, no. It, it looks too much, too weird. don't know how to express it, but it doesn't look like the blood red I, I was imagining, I was thinking, I was wanting. It. Okay. I can always mix some more colors on top afterwards, right? Okay. So, um, the, the title of this video was uh, Watercolor the Perfect Red. I don't think there is a perfect red. 
let's be honest here. There's not such thing that's perfect red. Everybody has their own opinion on what red they have. I think in my mind is I want to have the red that I have in my mind. Okay? And once I have the red that I have in my mind, then I can go forward and I can do stuff. Uh, and this is what perfect red is for me. But you have to remember what you're going to mix it with. Don't mix it with greens because that's going to just... I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, red and green. It's probably brown or something. Uh, or blue. No. If you mix it with yellow. If you mix it with yellow, it's going to go more orangey. I think what you need to mix it is with the, with the magenta. Oh, I have another one I could mix it with. A brown. That one we didn't do, right? So uh, let's try to mix in a brown. Um, maybe we're in luck. Maybe we find the correct one. Because it's either brown or... So I'm going to do the red tip. Or a magenta. Okay, and this is burnt umber. So we're gonna first wet the burnt umber, make sure that it's wet. Okay. Burnt umber might actually make it also a little bit darker. Oh wow! Totally changed the color, but I'm interesting to know how it's gonna look like when it's gonna dry. I want to add a little bit more burnt amber. See where we end up with. Okay, we end up with a really weird brown red. Okay, so just a little bit of a smidge of a burnt amber. So let's let's try this one. I bring it totally towards the burnt amber and then I try to bring it back. And this is how you can play. Like, this is something that you can do when you are super bored. You don't know what to do. Just mix colors and see what comes up. Maybe you're going to end up with a color that you actually like. And actually, it makes more sense. Okay, I'm bringing more back. This is more like brick red. It's so weird. It's brick red, this one. It's also a very beautiful color. Look, I didn't know about this color. It doesn't work for this flower that I want to do. But really beautiful uh, color. Okay? Don't get me wrong. This is really beautiful color. So we start with burnt amber and we just add red uh, red to it. And I'm going to add some more red. And this I'm bringing it back to the, to the first one. Okay. Interesting color combinations. Really interesting color combinations. Uh... So, what am I going to do? I'm going to actually use a combination. I'm going to use this one, which was the rose dip with the permanent violet. And then I'm going to bring in for the shadows a little bit of brown. See how that goes for my, sh my flower, okay? Might not work out, might work out, I don't know. But uh, this is what I do sometimes. I have these pieces of paper and I just try out colors and see see the combinations so i'm going to clean up again my palette here and um, the idea is to have a puddle of color that you're doing there okay because you want to have a puddle of color let me see i'm gonna have a tissue paper so let's try to mix again our red so it was this red. Let's mix bigger puddle. Okay, and I started slowly with the violet. So I just swiped once. Okay. Okay. I already know that that's probably not enough because I have quite some red there. And then. I'm gonna add some more. Okay, now it's really a deep red. And let's test it again. Does it look very similar to this one? Yes, I believe so. Maybe a little bit too much magenta this time. I'm gonna bring it some more red. Yep. 
this my puddle will deepen it with some brown okay I'm gonna put this one aside and we're gonna start on the painting I hope you guys are all watching soon when you are with me and I didn't all of a sudden f <laughs> fly off it, it can happen sometimes that that the stream just ends randomly um I didn't even know that I mean I didn't I don't even notice that uh it's middle of the week right now. Let me see if the arrangement is okay. Yeah, you can see. You can see everything. You can see everything. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to put this one a slightly smidge a bit more up. Yep. And this one is here. And that's going to be it. Uh, okay. Uh, yet again. Uh, water by the way uh, because it's so warm outside I feel the need to drink way more water so let's get into it let's get into it um, where will I start I, I would start with um, these leaves and I want to try two techniques so on the first one I'm just gonna wet the paper and then I'm gonna drop color in see what, how, how that goes but I'm not gonna wet the paper way too big so let's see so I'm very precise I'm only wetting where I want the color to go uh, and it's with clear water okay so you start with clear water you do things uh, I don't want the water to pool. I don't want the water to have anything. And then I'm taking paint. And then I'm just dropping it here. And I'm letting it spread. Okay. It has this weird effect. Like spider web effect. Or how would you call it? don't know if it's spider web perfect right oh wow that is such a pretty red this is exactly what I was remembering the tips were pretty much discolored or you know way lighter and the bottom way darker so I am cleaning up my brush. I'm picking up some. The the nice part about working with r a red deep and uh, perline violet is because they're granulating. They're not necessarily always staining. They're just sitting on top. So then you can always pick them up again. So let's do this. I'm adding for the next petal. You know, some people like to work one petal in, one petal out and not touch, let them touch. I want to see what happens if I let them touch. I want to see what happens, how how the paint flows. <laughs> okay. So we'll see. I'm pretty sure it will be fine. I'm not even letting this one reach here. Just going to be like this. I'm trying new techniques right now as well, right? But I want to see how this will look like. And then I'm going to, like I said, deepen it afterwards. I'm going to come in the shadow areas. I'm going to put brown and it's going to really deepen them. So let us sit and watch how things go. By the way, if you're new to my channel, hi. <laughs> Currently, I'm mostly doing uh, lots of live streams, but I have many, many videos about speed paint, um, with speed paint videos. So I like to do art. I like to paint flowers. I like to paint also bigger illustrations. Um, and my name is Claudia. So if you want to see uh, all the stuff that I do, uh, and if you want to be notified of my live streams, which usually happen twice a week, uh, Wednesdays and Sundays at this hour, uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe and to put your notifications on. 
like if you have the notifications bell on uh, YouTube usually notifies you whenever I'm going live or you know I schedule a live stream um, so because you know I might I might schedule some live streams I want to see what happens if I go in without pre-wetting the area I'm gonna try some of the upper ones so I want to see if I can load my brush and be very careful so I'm using really the tip of my brush to go around all these delicate parts the middle stamen which I'm going to do with gray actually so this is something that I'm going to work on okay Uh, works very similar to when I am painting with first wetting the area and then and that's probably because I didn't wet the outer area very uh, much a lot so you know it's okay I think I can I can continue doing this so I can continue doing wet on dry technique instead of wet on wet because wet on wet can be quite nerve-wracking sometimes so I'm going to continue and remember whenever you're doing any illustration anything with watercolor or even with acrylics or even with oils the first layers are going to be pretty chitty uh, the other layers might be actual okay because you're gonna add shadows, you're gonna dip in some colors, we're gonna go with violet, with brown. It's gonna be interesting. But for now, don't expect much from the first layers, huh? And that makes you wonder whether actually it's worth it to try to find the perfect red if we're gonna add so many layers in, in the end. You know, that might be a question to ask ourselves. Um, I actually want to do the outer petals a slightly different color, more orangey. So I want to see how that will work. Okay. So you can see that it's quite a lot of work that goes into creating a sticker because you have to find a design to just do it. And then you have to have have the colors and color it in takes quite some time I would I would assume so kudos for all those people out there that are making awesome stickers and you might be wondering like why not open a shop everywhere why not shop open shops I don't know red bubble and all the other ones so I actually want to add I want to make it more orangey now so I'm going to add more orange into the mix. Um, there's a very good reason for it. It's probably because I'm going to have pretty much lots of price differences. Uh, which if I sell the same thing over and over again, people are going to ask. But if I order from Redbubble... Isn't it cheaper, for example, than if I order from from you or from your Etsy store, right? So if I am going to open a, a Red Bubble account, I'll probably open it with totally different merchandise. Then, oh yeah, these colors work very well together. So what I did is I added orange or transparent orange to that mixture of before. And it really uh, made it more into a, actually a brown, which is weird, right? <laughs> um, but luckily, all these manufacturers are very good in totally different things. For example, Printful. I love the tote bags and I love the bags and the pillows. The quality is excellent, right? Sticker Mule, I love the stickers. <laughs> So we might not even need to discuss it that much, right? Okay. Uh, 
Dun, dun, dun. I'm really concentrating here. Really liking the direction where this one is going. And now we're just going to mix another batch. So I want some more rose dip. A red dip, not rose dip. Right, and... I want to do a second layer and a little bit of the magenta to darken it up. So we're going to have some darkened red. And we're going to add some more. The rest is going to be pretty much uh, different shades of green. So, you know, I don't have to worry about it. Even these ones. So it's going to be different greens and so on. So, you know, that's about it. Just the center. It's usually pretty red. Then I'm going to add even the the brown. Brown it it up. <laughs> okay. I actually forgot to show you one of the products, which I might need to show you. <laughs> I actually forgot to show you because I also ordered bags, like plastic bags with my own design. Because I thought if I'm going to start sending stuff from home... <laughs> like stickers or whatever i need to put them into a plastic bag because you never know when it's gonna get water damaged or what what not um and i actually ordered um the perfect you see already the second layer looks way better <laughs> it looks way better than the first layer okay and uh i'm going to show you after this one so st stick to the end stick towards the end um it's going to take a while, right? I mean, this is a complicated flower, so luckily it's not a, it's not a huge, huge flower, but still pretty complicated. So uh, it's going to take us because I'm going to have to be really nice about the greens and try to blend everything. You notice that my style is pretty blended, blendable, blended. Uh, and that's because that's how I like my watercolors to be. I do not like harsh lines. Um, it's personal preference. It's part of style. Okay. It is what it is. We're not gonna. We're not gonna discuss style. Like everybody has their own style, and everybody has their own ideas of what they do. By the way, Easter is coming. Haven't done any Easter stuff yet. Uh, but I'll probably just make a cake. Uh, since this is still in a lockdown, we can't celebrate with the family, so we're just gonna, I'm not gonna do what I, I usually did <laughs> in the past, like, go wild and create, like, I remember the last time I, I also uh, called some colleagues and some of my friends, and I had, like, seven, uh, types of food and like cake and and cookies and people couldn't even eat after the first course or something <laughs> they were like claudia you cooked too much so I, i'm not gonna do that anymore because it makes no sense uh, but yeah this is gonna be interesting i'm gonna darken the orange so you darken the orange by adding more red to it okay gonna darken the orange and we're gonna do some cute uh, second layer on this one once it's all dry I'm going to go in with the brown and really add some shadows and some stuff but for now looks okay as a second layer it looks okay okay so I'm sorry my friends you're gonna have to miss my cooking <laughs> And the funny part is not, is not that I am cooking because I really enjoy cooking. <laughs> and I really enjoy having somebody to cook for. All that food. Even though it takes a long time. Uh, but now I don't have to. Uh, so I'll probably do something special for us. Uh, only two. But maybe it's just going to be a abnormal uh, Easter Easter stuff with uh, just maybe a cheese platter or something. 
Okay, cool. Yay. Uh, this is super cool. And now what we're going to do is I'm, I want to go towards the leaves. Um, and the first row of leaves is more like a green with gray. So we're going to try that one. Uh, we're going to take one of our greens. Which one should we take? I'm going to take the undersea green. Uh, this is a cool green. I really like undersea green. There, there are some things that are becoming my favorite. So I'm thinking I have a small palette. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm probably going to start picking up my six or ten colors that I always enjoy and do them. So this is more of a green green gray okay and these are these leaves here like these are tiny leaves that are on the protea flower and uh, they always look really nice <laughs> So, I was wondering if you guys now in the lockdown are buying more flowers. Because in the past, I didn't used to buy that many flowers. Maybe on my birthday or something. Uh, but not really that many flowers. because Probably because I wasn't really home. So I wasn't really seeing them. So, But now that I'm in a lockdown... I'm pretty much uh, asking my husband to buy me flowers, which is I know it's weird, but he's the flower master. He can, he can make really nice bouquet, and uh, he's always bringing me flowers and so on, which is really nice. I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining at all. Like, please continue, okay? <laughs> but I have a feeling that I'm doing mu much more flowers now because in the lockdown because since I'm staying always at home like if you remember if you I don't know if you remember if you remember that's so funny what could you remember uh, but if anybody of you was going to the office pretty often you might remember that always like reception always had flowers okay and um, yeah it was, it was always nice always had had the flowers I'm going to do much uh, more uh, green gold and undersea green here and this ones and then this ones they're gonna be towards the bluish uh, we'll see we'll see um, undersea green by the way when it uh, when it separates it separates into blue and green which is interesting that's how they actually do the uh, the stuff yeah I buy more flower nowadays okay so Johan, Johan, you actually buy more flowers. <laughs> okay, that's uh, that's really nice. So uh, yeah, um, I am surprised, but I'm I'm a bit worried because now. The flower industry, maybe it's used now to people buying more flowers. And then when the lockdowns are going to be over, I wonder if we're going to keep our lockdown preferences in. Just, just thinking out loud how consumer habits might change. Although even if lockdowns end, I don't know if we're ever going to be back to the office fully. Not in the next year or so. That's going to be an interesting... Interesting... Realization. And don't worry, this is just the first layer. I'm going to add more. So... I'm going to add more... More stuff. This one I want to make even darker. So I'm going to leave at the end. Just the next row, basically, of leaves I'm going to do. 
I made quite some videos the other day. I, I was going to the park and there are so many flowers all, all around. It's pretty nice. So made quite some nice videos. So I'm going to share them soon. And this is what, what keeps me going. I go to the park, you know, I see some cool stuff and my mind is full of, I don't know, the splendor of the nature in a way, you know, and uh, keeps me going to the next day, keeps me, keeps me going mentally because you really need a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a boost or a mental boost or something. <laughs> One of my colleagues was asking because he wanted to <laughs> he wanted to buy a cat, but he's allergic to cats, but he realized he's not allergic to all cats. So he actually wanted to come and visit my cats to see whether he's allergic to my cats. My cats are the European short hair kind of race or the common cat as people say it. <laughs> Uh, and he's going to come and he's like, I, I need to come and do kind of a sniffing session <laughs> because I need to see whether I get sick <laughs> or not. Uh, so that's an interesting, interesting stuff. He really wants, he has a dog though. So I'm always wondering how that will work with a dog. But, you know, in the past I did have uh, both cats and dogs and they get along just fine. I had two Rottweilers. Um, so I think things would work out uh, cats and dogs maybe are not natural enemies but they do have to be introduced a little bit slowly to each other you know like don't make the mistake of introducing them too fast and then expect them to get along because that's not how how things go however Pretty, uh, pretty stoked that more people realize that uh, they need a nice furry, furry companion. <gasps> now I realize maybe I need to make more illustration with my furry companions. Ooh, I get so many ideas right now. <laughs> I get so many. Ideas. Okay, I know it looks weird, right? Uh, don't worry. We're gonna add uh, a lot more. I'm gonna add a lot more. Don't worry. First to this one, second layer because it dried out and I'm going to give the um, possibility to these other ones to dry out. You can see that because it didn't dry out, it kind of seeps into it, but that's okay. Because anyway, I'm going to add the same color there. It feels okay. Just this one is going to be much concentrated. Okay. So, in a way, I, I was waiting for more nicer weather to come, for summer to come. But actually, in the end, I just want maybe spring to come. Because <laughs> summer, I know, is going to be super hot. <laughs> so, I'm not sure I want summer. Okay, it's a weird thing to say. I don't want summer, but yeah. I don't feel like a summer person right now. <laughs> I don't think like it's something I would like to experience because i know it's going to be super hot like lately the summers have been so hot and i was wondering how will i how will i be able to do my live streams it's going to be so hot um, because usually i have i have an airco but it's a mobile unit and the air, airco might actually make a lot of noise while i'm doing live stream <laughs> so that's going to be very interesting how that's going to go Do you guys have aircos, the people that are watching? Uh, because I'm really interested in if more people have aircos or not. I know it, they consume lots of energy, but still, I don't think our houses or anything were built enough for this kind of climate and this kind of changes. 
I think uh, usually it's not it's not possible anymore without an air code to stay, right? Um, I mean, now you keep all the windows open and everything. It still gets hot, although it's spring. Uh, but it's nice, it's a breeze. But man, there are sometimes like two weeks in summer when it's going to be super hell. So that's about it. Hey, I remember a funny thing. When I used to be in Romania, we used to have um, also this kind of very hot summers, much hotter than in the Netherlands, okay? Let's be honest. In the Netherlands, it's still hot, but it's not as hot. Um, and it was in the summer of 2001, and I still remember it was so hot, we couldn't even sleep inside the house. We were sleeping in the garden, basically. But then, the day of the eclipse arrived, if you remember the eclipse of 2001, and it wasn't even a total eclipse or anything, <laughs> uh, which is always very funny, at least not in the area where I used to be. But immediately after that eclipse, because it was a, a short window where, you know, basically the earth cooled down because there was no direct sunlight. It's so weird how immediately it had an effect. Everything cooled down, and then... Uh, the heat spell got broken and I'm always saying like hey we need to have another s uh, solar eclipse so that the heat spells you know end although I don't know how that's gonna go so this already looks much better on the second layer to be honest so You know, maybe I don't need to struggle that much and maybe I don't need to put that much detail in my artwork because it's going to be a sticker, so it's going to be much, <laughs> much uh, smaller. But I can't. I am. Uh, uh, this is, by the way, perling green. <laughs> I'm a person that goes all the way, man, all the way. So... Uh, we're gonna go and we're gonna deepen some more. This is perlin green. I'm just gonna add it here. I'm gonna add it here as well. And here. Right. Uh, cleaning up my brush. Coming in. So adding, adding a third layer basically. That's what we're doing here. would look much better. Mm, yep. This is what I like about watercolors, that you can glaze with them. You can go on top of each other and you can glaze watercolors. And glazing is where you put layer after layer after layer. Um, it's really pretty. And as long as you don't go too dark on each of the layers, right? then you can almost glaze indefinitely until you get to the desired color. And I think that is also one of the exercises that you can do whenever you're, you know, not feeling it or uh, feeling bored with your watercolors. You don't always have to make uh, masterpieces, right? You can uh, do this type of exercises. These are nice. And you just watch something. You're just going to have a watch. Uh, it's gonna be nice so now is the time when I'm regretting not taping this this one to a board because it starts to buckle a little bit I'm putting way too many layers so I'm regretting not um, not doing this one to a board but it's too late now I'm not backing down I'm not gonna go look for a board now in the middle of a rice stream but um, lesson learned for me next time because I think this one needed a little bit of a board. Okay, 
I think I'm going to make some different choices of color for the other ones. Okay. I'm almost I'm almost prepared to get my my Dervent palette out because that's one uh, kind of the color that I wanted to get on this other leaves is more like the steel uh, steel green and I'm thinking I'm thinking and thinking and thinking should I should I should I <laughs> should I get my other palette out I think you can definitely mix and match palettes Oh, by the way, an update on the Derwent stuff, <laughs> uh, which is always interesting. So the Derwent graphite tint, uh, indeed, they you can buy individual pants to replace the ones that uh, you know you're running out of. However, you can only order them in the UK. You can't order them anywhere else. And surprise, surprise, because of Brexit. You can not send him in here. Uh, you notice here I went over the line. It happens. Uh, I cannot necessarily fix it right now, but we're gonna cut it anyway around it when we're gonna make the sticker. So you know it happens. Um, watercolor is never perfect. Okay, uh, watercolor is never um, something that you can say I've done perfectly right now and. Okay, I'm preparing some gray because I want to add some more, some gray. And I'm also preparing some brown. So let's see how that goes. Dun, dun, dun. Adding some brown to the lead, to the flowers. Seeing whether or not the color changes. Uh, when you add any glaze brown on top, this is burnt amber. But it looks pretty much like red because it's quite transparent. Let's put it this way. So don't expect. Uh, it's just going to make it more warm down, right? It's not going to look like brown. And this is the beauty of glazing. It's not it's never going to look like brown. It's going to look like a deeper shade, shade of that red. Look how pretty it's looking. Yep. Um, So, what a color masters have tried and and did this kind of techniques every day. I wonder what will happen if you would master the techniques. Like, um, I was reading an interesting article. So the article was saying the following. <laughs> um, you know, everybody was saying like, oh, you need at least uh, ten thousand hours um, to become a master in something. And I was like, man, 10,000 hours, it's a long time. <laughs> it's a long time. So 10,000 hours, uh, think about it, like, it's 40 hours a week, like a work week. If you were to say, I'm working now and, and, and so on. Um, in uh, 50, so f uh, 40 hours a week. Uh, even if you do uh, one entire week, uh, so you have 52 weeks in total in a year, and you do 40 hours every week, uh, 40 times 52, 200, 200 and 2,500, nah, nah. Ah, look what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the calculator, ah, I'm so... 52 times 40 ISOs, like 2080. So you're going to have 2080. That means that if you're going to spend that time to perfect your craft and to get to the 10,000 hours that that article was saying, interestingly, <sighs> how many years is that? Five years. Five years to become a master at any skill on average. It turns out that that's not, is very misleading, right? Because becoming a master, they were equating that with becoming a master, for example, a chess player or in chess or something like that, 
like uh, the ma- grandmaster chess players. Yeah, 10,000 hours is five years. Five years of constant, like every week, at least eight hour a week, uh, eight hour every day, five days a week. Uh, just doing only that, only that, right? But to just become good at something, I mean, not perfect, not master level or anything, just good. It turns out you only need 20 hours. <laughs> like in a skill, like uh, blending or wet in wet or things like that. And 20 hours is almost, well, it's half a week, right? Of eight hours a day, blah, 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 blah. Or let's say even one week. So if you do one week with eight hours a day. So what I wanted to say is, I don't think we should be following any advice of any uh, weird things that are happening. Oh no, I want some paints gray. I want some different colors there. <laughs> I think we should all be um, just trying to practice and maybe we don't get to practice every day. But even if you practice, let's say, one hour every few days, you're still going to be so much um, further away because they stack up. It's amazing. So if I would have learned, let's say, let's say you want to learn programming and I'm not going to say about learning watercolors or anything on programming even if you do one hour every day you have to imagine that uh, in the end you're gonna have 30 hours 30 hours that you probably going to become good at in a month right because they stack up and this is like but you have to be patient and you have to see how things progress because only with patience and sticking with it and the same is with watercolor right i'm sticking with it i'm i'm going forward but you really have to uh, make some small efforts and you know uh, stick with it and that's why i keep doing these live streams like um, i want to improve right but maybe i can't do art every day Um, as many of you, we need to work, we need to put food on the table, right, basically. However, I do want at the end of the week, I want to say, hey, I spent X many hours, like even if I spend at the end of the week only 12 hours on something, I'm going to be happy because that means progress, that means in a few months they're going to add up and I'm going to know, like, I already see much more difference in what I'm doing now than when I started, right, like uh, so much difference so much smoother gradient than what I did when I did the heart and that is just this is February and now we are April right so I already see difference so what do I want to say with this um stick with it man stick with it (laughs) it will get good it will be better okay I want to do some viridian here Uh, viridian is a very nice color to be honest and I'm, I'm going to do some flowers with Viridian. And I'm going to darken them with Jadeite. Wow. So foamy. So weird. Especially these ones in the back. I wanted to do with, uh, with this color. With Viridian. And I'm going to this. I don't know what type of leaves these are. I don't know why I make square leaves. Who makes square leaves? <laughs> Only I make square leaves. I would I would assume. Uh, but bottom line is I want to do more of the products that I ordered like from Sticker Moon. I want to do more coasters. So I want to have at least let's say five coaster designs. I want to have um, a label set where I'm going to do labels with uh, different uh, writings like I'm I'm going to have to look in my pantry what do I actually have in my pantry that would warrant the label which is very funny um, and I'm gonna do it in my style maybe I'm not gonna try to necessarily draw uh, whatever is in that one like if you have cinnamon I'm not gonna do a label that has cinnamon I want to do my labels with my flowers but just with the writing 
Uh, and I think that's going to be really nice. So whoever doesn't like that, that's fine. Uh, we are not going to hold it against you. Yeah, I... Do that. Okay, now this is Jadite. So I'm going to add a little bit more here. And I'm going to darken this one. Okay. <sighs> These ones I really want to... Okay, I'm going to try later on to do them much darker. So now I have... Oh, maybe I'll use the Viridian on this one here. Because it really stands out. It's only one of them that really is standing out. Yeah, this is going to be nice here. It's going to peek out of, and I'm going to do that one also. It's going to just peek out underneath, and then this this ones I'm going to do different colors of green. This one is going to give it a very weird, different concentration. Okay. You know that Viridian is more of a... It's more used when you do paintings of the sea or something, but we are not that proficient in, make, in making paintings of the sea. It's gonna really stand out. And I'm hoping it's still in my style. <laughs> Because, yeah, I just don't want to, I don't want, I want it to be my style to be recognizable, but in the same time, I'm wondering, I don't want to make my style to be too rigid, I want it to be more fluid, okay. Okay. Again, I went over the lines here, it's fine. There's nothing I can do here. Okay. Uh, which color should I use? Which colors? Um, so I could use the May green with olive green. Uh, that could be. Or I could just do paint blue with, let's see what colors comes. I'm just like uh, randomly mixing two colors and see what colors come. Okay, that's permanent green. Permanent green sounds okay. Okay, let's see if that will stand out here to the testament. No. That's going to be too much into the line of that one. Okay, let's do this one and the other one with the other palette. Because I just uh, I just had in mind some colors. And I just want to make sure that we can, we can do them. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are the other palettes here. Hmm. <sighs> I'm going to do the shadow green and then I'm going to do the slate the slate green on these ones. So, yay. Like Japanese palettes to the rescue. <laughs> okay. Shadow yellow and shadow green, but let's do shadow green. This is going to be much darker color. You will see it right now. Yeah. Um, I could possibly get that color with my other watercolors, but then I have to really make the same exercise as I did in the beginning with mixing of colors and everything. <laughs> so um, not sure I want to get into that exercise right now. Uh, 
This is gonna be nice. It's nice because it's uh, such a darker color and it sits in contrast with the other one. So, you know, you always have to have contrast. Contrast. And you can achieve two things, two different contrasts. So you can have contracts, contrast in shapes. So they could be, like I did here with the leaves, they could be square leaves. Or... Um, rounded leaves, like rounded leaves and so on, and pointed leaves and more rounded stuff. So contrast can be in shape. Uh, contrast can be in color. Or contrast can be in size. And um, what I mean by size, I mean, you always should have um, for example, some leaves that are uh, smaller, some leaves that are bigger, not everything should be the same size. And that's how you achieve the contrast, contrast in, in size. So three types of contrasts, very important whenever you are making an artwork, right? And then you can achieve the contra contrast in size by doing things differently by playing with the perspective, by doing something in the foreground, some, something in the background. You know, you have different ways to achieving that type of contrast and that's okay. Uh, but if everything would be the same color, then it will just look super flat. I don't think it will look very good. So that's the only, the only thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh no, happy! He sneezed. Oh, my cat sneezed. <laughs> he's so cute. He's sitting on his uh, cardboard boxes and he's sneezing like crazy. <laughs> he's so sweet. <sighs> can I say cheers to cat? Yeah, probably I can say cheers to cat. Yes, I can do that. Okay, and now I'm going to do a uh, different type of uh, color for these ones why not they're more bluish and that's okay it's more of a blue blue green but that should teach me <laughs> not to make too many f too many leaf types because I think I made too many leaf types and maybe I should uh, have a leaf section in my uh in my stickers and that section should be dedicated only to leaves so you know I should have some different types of leaves and different types of things <laughs> and also with the exactly the color combinations already done because to be honest <laughs> I think this is what I, I am missing that uh, out of the box like okay for this type of leaves where colors would it go well okay dokie um i think this is kind of drawing to an end now i just have to add um the details okay and details i'm going to add with uh dots and lines and things like that so let me know what do you think is this something that uh, you enjoy doing? Do you think that you should make a design for just a thing like stickers? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on this? I'm going to do my... I don't know if you guys remember, I always say this. This is my... My dot mania. I don't know why I'm doing this. Why am I doing dots? But I like it. I like the... I like to see this. Not everything needs to have a dot, but, you know, some of these ones do. Okay. It makes it a little bit pop, right? So I'm going to do some dots on these leaves. Mm. 
maybe not every leaf and some dots are going to be smaller than others And this can be like the sun, the sun parts, the sun damage, kind of, so to say. And you can see that the paper really does curl. So my advice to you next time, if you are trying this, uh, do tape it to a surface, man, because uh, it's not doable. I am... I'm really regretting my decision. <laughs> I thought, well, I'm not going to use them in layers or that many stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, what colors do we have? Let's do some more shadow green here. And this one, okay, and this one has lines and so on. Maybe I'll add with the Viridian, I'll add some weird, weird lines. Okay, now because we're drawing to gloss, uh, you guys can ask me all the questions you always wanted to ask me now before I'm going to stop the stream. So if you want to ask me any questions, let me know. Now would be a good time to ask them. I sometimes feel like I'm... I can say whatever I want on a string. Okay. I think I'm going to call it a day for this design. It looks really nice. It's much better than what I expected. I like the fact that this sea of red is really circled around by old green and all the different types of greens. It's kind of how, how that flowers look like. Um, so really looks nice. I cannot wait to see how I can transform this one into a sticker. So, uh, you know onwards to my next sticker designs because these are like super super important thank you so much for staying with me and uh, uh, for watching till the end uh, if like I said if you are new here don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell because uh, it really helps uh, for you to get notified whenever I have a live stream uh, or anything new so oh thank you Marlena very very nice gorgeous thank you and I hope you like the products and I hope you're going to be uh, uh, coming alongside me when, uh, you know, we're going to open the shop and we're going to do all the all the things. For now, I'll keep you posted when new things arrive and new products arrive. So that's going to be nice. Yeah. Um, thank you and bye.